AQA, A-level physics, projectile motion, another mechanics video, projectile motion. Uh, this is the bit of the specification that I will be covering in this video. Okay, so the search for more accurate and powerful weapons uh, has driven technological advances for thousands of years and still does. Uh, it's amazing how many scientists and engineers end up working on basically building weapons and designing and looking after weapons. Uh, and ballistics uh, is a very important field. OK, uh, imagine a car drives horizontally off a cliff. I don't suggest you do this, but imagine it. There's a car driving horizontally off a cliff. Now, ignoring air resistance, we'll talk about air resistance later. Uh, it will follow a curved path uh, and that path is called a parabola. Uh, in A-level maths, you'll meet parabolas and the word parabola Parabola, it's the path of a projectile, a parabola. Now, imagine this. First of all, imagine the car drives off a cliff and at the same time, there's a car at the bottom of the cliff that's got the same velocity. So the kind of drive together and horizontally, they will cover the same distance in the same time. Uh, and if you like, I mean, the car that drives off the cliff will will land on the other car. OK, horizontally, it doesn't matter what's happening. They'll do the same thing. They'll have the same horizontal velocity. OK, ignoring air resistance. Now, vertically, imagine this. Imagine the car drives off the cliff and at the same time, uh, somebody falls off a cliff and, and basically, the two of them will hit the ground at the same time. So vertically, whatever's happening horizontally doesn't matter. Whatever's happening horizontally doesn't matter. Vertically, they will have the same acceleration. OK, vertically, the car and the man will fall uh, the same height in the same amount of time. Their acceleration will be 9.8 meters per second squared ignoring air resistance. So you should see that the horizontal and the vertical components of this two dimensional motion can be considered independently. OK, we can consider the horizontal and vertical components of the object's motions separately. And basically for a projectile horizontally, the object will move with uniform velocity. I keep saying ignoring air resistance. I'm not going to say it anymore. Horizontally, the objects move with uniform velocity. Vertically, the object accelerates uniformly due to gravity, 9.8 meters per second squared. And so you can use your SUVAT equations. So vertically, SUVAT equations. Horizontally, it's just velocity is distance over time, horizontally. Let's have a go at this question here. Uh, if you want to pause the video and have a go at it by yourself, a car drives horizontally off a cliff, uh, a 30 meter cliff at a velocity of 20 meters per second. How long will it take to hit the ground? How far from the cliff will it land? And the answers are, so vertically, uh, we're using an equation of motion. S equals UT plus a half AT squared, or in this case, H equals UT. Now, vertically, U is zero because it has no vertical velocity to begin with. So it's just H equals a half GT squared. And if you work it out, 2.47 seconds. And then horizontally, now that we know the time, uh, we can just do distance is velocity times time. Uh, using the velocity of 20 meters per second, uh, and that gives us 49.5 meters. This is a little bit trickier because this isn't a horizontal projection. 
So when we consider the horizontal and the vertical components, we need to resolve the velocity. So the horizontal component of the velocity will be 20 cos 75. The vertical component will be 20 sine 75. Anyway, pause the video, have a go at it yourself, pen, paper, calculator, and I'll show you the answer in a couple of seconds. So a golf ball, when struck, is given a velocity of 20 meters per second at an angle of 75 degrees to the horizontal. Calculate the height it reaches, its time of flight, and how far it travels on level ground. Its range, we call it the range of this projectile. So uh, to get the height it reaches is basically just a SUVAT equation. We need to get the vertical component of the velocity, which is 20 sine 75, which is 19.3 meters per second. Uh, then I've done V squared is U squared plus 2AS, and that gives me a height of 19.0 meters. Now, to get the time of flight is a little trick. What I've done is I've worked out the time it takes to get to the highest point, and then I double it because it will take the same amount of time to get up as it does to get down. So vertically, I've just done V equals U plus AT and got 1.97 seconds to get to the top and then double that 3.94 seconds and that will be the time of flight. And then horizontally, now we have the time of flight, we can just multiply that by the horizontal component uh, of the velocity and that will give us the range and it gives us 20.4 meters. This is a very common kind of AQA. I've seen it a lot on multi-choice questions. Be really familiar with this, be able to do this. Variations on this kind of question. Let's talk a little bit more about air resistance. This slide is 100% GCSE. You should know this. Air resistance increases with speed. Uh, as an object falls freely, then the air resistance force increases as the velocity increases. It's actually proportional to the velocity squared. Okay. Uh, the resultant force um, the resultant force, which is the weight minus the air resistance, will decrease, and so the acceleration of the object will decrease until eventually the acceleration will be zero uh, and it will have reached a terminal velocity. When the weight equals the air resistance, the object will have reached its terminal velocity. You may be asked this. I know it's GCSE, but you may be asked to show that you understand this. What does fluid friction, when an object moves through a fluid? A fluid is a liquid or a gas. So air resistance is fluid friction. And it depends on the velocity of the object, as I've just said. It depends on the viscosity of the fluid. So if a, the submarine's moving through water, you know, it's much more viscous than air. And it will depend on the shape uh, and the surface area of the object. Uh, something called the drag coefficient. If you were talking about a car, you talk about the, the drag coefficient of the car. Uh, 